So what we're going to do today is we're going to collect a gas over water. And to do so, we're going to need a gas forming reaction. So what I have here is a piece of magnesium that I have wound in a thread and tied at both ends so that literally I can hold on to the piece of magnesium. The reason for this is as the magnesium reacts, hydrogen bubbles are going to form on it, making it very light, and it's going to tend to want to float away and stop reacting with the acid it's in. So I like to secure it. Now, we're going to use a udiometer, a gas forming tube that is closed at one end, open at the other. We're going to fill it with liquid and we are going to place our magnesium inside, invert it, and place it in water. So the magnesium will end up at the bottom of the tube. The acid will be at the top of the tube and as it drifts down, because it's denser, it will begin to react with the magnesium. Gas will form and of course the gas will rise to the tube and we will collect it over water. So we know we're going to have two gases in this tube. We're going to have hydrogen and water vapor. So in order to do this, we're going to place the hydrochloric acid that's going to react with the magnesium in the bottom of the tube. I'm going to take a funnel, and I'm going to use approximately, approximately 10 milliliters of 6 molar acid. Never pour it above your head, and you should be wearing goggles, and I will as well. So over a sink and below eye level, you will add about 10 milliliters. 10 milliliters will be excess, so we don't have to measure it carefully. I've got about 10 milliliters of acid here, and there are markings on the udiometer that tell me how much I have. Now I'm ready to fill the rest with water, because of course we can't start with any gas in the tube. It must be filled entirely with water. So I will carefully pour water down the side of the tube. Water is less dense than the acid solution, so the water should be on top at this point. And when it's entirely filled with water, I'll take my piece of magnesium and insert it into the tube. And I make sure that the string holding the magnesium hangs outside the tube. That will anchor it to the bottom when I turn it upside down. And I once again make sure it's absolutely filled to the brim with water. Then I place my thumb firmly over the edge, nothing gets in or out. Invert the tube, lower it into the water, release my thumb. The reaction is complete when I notice and observe at the bottom that all of the magnesium has dissolved and reacted and there's no further bubble formation. I have successfully collected above water this amount of hydrogen gas. But of course, remember, there's also water vapor in here. Now, if I'm going to do some stoichiometry and calculate how much magnesium we reacted, I'm going to need to know how much hydrogen gas is in this tube. So here's what I do. First, I lift the tube up, place my thumb over the tube end so that nothing gets in or out. There's no air added. I still just have hydrogen and water vapor. Then I lift up and place it down inside a graduated cylinder that is filled with water. Now, what's the point of that, you ask? Well, I do know the temperature of this gas. It should be the same as the temperature of the water in which the reaction occurred. So if I simply measure the temperature of the beaker, I'll know the temperature of the gas in here. I also need to know its volume and its pressure. Now, you may be saying, how do I know the pressure of that gas in there? Well, if we know the pressure in the room, we can determine the pressure of the gas in the tube. Currently, the level of water in the tube is higher than the level of water outside the tube. The atmosphere is pushing down on the water outside the tube. The gas is pressing down on the water inside the tube. And the gas inside the tube isn't pushing as hard as the gas outside the tube. That's because the level of water is higher inside than out. It's a push of war between the atmosphere and the gas we've collected. So what I do is I lower the tube so that the level of water inside and outside is identical. And that means the pressure of the gas in this tube is the same as the pressure in the room. All we need to do is check a barometer. And not only do we know the pressure in the room, we now know the pressure inside the tube. And this is the volume I want to measure, where I know the pressure. 
Because if I raise and lower this tube, I notice the volume keeps changing. And that's, of course, according to Boyle's law. We're increasing and decreasing pressure by doing this. And so, of course, we're decreasing and increasing our volume. So if I know the pressure when the levels of water are equal, that's the volume I want to measure. I look down and see what volume I have. That's the volume in the tube of gas. That's the pressure, the same as the room, of the gas. And the temperature is the same as the water we collected the gas over. Then all I have to do is some calculating. I will take my pressure. I'll eliminate the portion of the pressure that's water vapor. It's Dalton's law. There are two gases in here. And I'll know the pressure of the hydrogen gas alone. I'll know the volume. I'll know the temperature. I can calculate moles.